Well, when I heard what the council proposed to do with the Charing Cross Library, I was really angry. <laughs> Hello, my friends. Have you got one minute? Okay. Hi, sorry to bother you. We're running a petition trying to save Charing Cross Library, which is just around the corner. Hello. Yeah. Would you like to help us to sign the petition? My name is He Qingya, and people also call me Ambrose. I am a Chinese editor for a website. In this project, I'm one of the key leaders to help managing this project. I'm mainly in charge of social media and I do street petition. During the street petition, there were many people came to support us and some of them told me books is not as many as before, like five years ago. They have definitely much more materials for kids and now they don't have that many options. The Westminster Council is cutting down the budget for the Westminster libraries. Charing Cross Library is one of them. Since 2014, more than 340 libraries have been closed in the UK. Last year, due to the city budget cutting, £25 million pounds was slashed from library service budget. Westminster City Council planned to cut off £750,000 from the library service budget. As we know, uh, the British government had Brexit uh, and we are now in a period of cuts in this country. And so it's understandable that there will be lots of cuts. But for the Chinese community, uh, contribute a lot to this country, pay taxes and all sorts of things, but we get very little resources back. And the library is the only Chinese library that exists in London, which is open to the public, not university libraries. And I think it is totally wrong to actually cut it. The Westminster Chinese Library, based at Charing Cross Library, holds one of the largest Chinese collections to be found at UK public libraries. The Chinese Library draws 70% of readers to Charing Cross Library. It is an important resource for the Chinese and other users living in London. Uh, that the residents here need a, a community, need a library to serve that community and within the, that community are many Chinese. The library not only serves as a place where you can go and read and draw out books, but also as a community. It's the centre of a community where people meet each other who are interested in reading, in furthering their education, in using the facilities there uh, for other kinds of events which draw the community together and make the community stronger. At the moment, we are actually getting petitions being done, uh, preparing uh, possible legal action against the local council. We released the many different articles, like both in English and Chinese, on different channels to tell people how important this library is. And we got over 900 signatures online, and we also got around 1,200 signatures on the paper. And the signature numbers is not a big problem. We don't really have to reach 5,000. This number is just um, trying to get the people together to let them know this library is in danger. <laughs> This is a very tiny local library and we don't want to lose it. The most difficult thing is people say, we don't care, the library is cutting down everywhere. It's Charing Cross Library. It's fine, it's still opening. Yes, it is opening right now, but what about five years later? Will it still be there? 
with the budget cutting, the previous Chinese service team leader was withdrawn as a part of internal reorganization process. This remarkable change is another important reason why people started to worry about the future quality of the library service. My dad said to me, this, what's happening here is guan sou ju tinghua. So it's, you're slowly cooking a frog to death in boiling water. I think that that is probably the best way to sum it up. You know, you had a Chinese service team leader of the whole Westminster Libraries network, and now it's been taken over by a sort of community development department. But, you know, possibly that community development brief is just a little bit too generalised for specialist services, the Chinese library service. You're removing people who know best about this library and the, the needs of the community of users. In all senses, it's just a negligent decision. And it's a very, I mean, it's very disheartening that you're not listened to as someone who actually uses the library. I would think they'll need um, a Chinese person to guide them on which book they'll need to buy. Number one, the library is right near Chinatown. Also, number two, it's a very, it's a very, you know, it's a very important place to Chinese people as well as Londoners. And I think that if you go to such such a place, such as the library, you'll need a Chinese person to guide you as the books are based on different things. There's Chinese history, you know, there's modern history, there's books for young kids, and they're all on Chinese. And I think if you will need the best answer and the best guidance for what book you need, you should ask a Chinese person. The petition group has received replies from the Westminster City Council, but the email content does not ease the tension. They are still waiting for a further discussion with the council. We do get some replies from the council, but all of them are using the same template, such as we will keep the high quality Chinese service as before. But how high the quality is? Does the manager speak Chinese? Like these kind of details, they never reply. They always keep saying the same thing again and again and again. We just want the Chinese library can still be there, like, forever, as long as the building can last. We don't want to lose this Chinese library. 30 years experience between Chinese community and British community, we have this kind of a statue symbolize, represents the libraries representing our friendship, if you move it out, where can we find it? Our memory, where we going, where we going? Mm -hmm.